like? I met with him a couple of times quite close to his death. Um, and interestingly, we did talk about death even in one of those meetings. And um, he was ready for it. He was really ready for it. He was very kind of um, pragmatic and even quite nonchalant about it. Maybe by then, maybe by the time you reach 93 years old, you know that some of the really terrible things that can happen in old age, to lose certain faculties, wasn't going to happen to him. So he, he'd cleared a few hurdles in terms of that process. Mahamati worked out quite recently that he thinks it was about 17 years ago that we first started to make plans for Bounty's funeral. Sabuti, I think, had actually suggested to Mahamati he get together a little group of people who would oversee it. So then, with Bounty's blessing, we started to look at what we would do. I mention his blessing because he was quite, uh, he knew that we were doing that. It's one of those things where, it was quite straightforward, actually, to have a conversation with Bante about that and say, oh, you know, the funeral committee are thinking this, so what do you think about that? Bante had been gra gradually been deteriorating uh, in terms of his health. He'd been off his food for about 10 days before he died. It looked like it could be digestive problems, but actually it turned out really to be more heart and lung problems, and eventually it was pneumonia. We just scrapped any kind of schedule that we were thinking of and the site then went into a very ritualised space. And then there was this ritual of Bante arriving uh, back from the funeral directors. And I was asked if I would be in the courtyard to welcome, say something, welcome him back. Which uh, was a very strong thing to do. And what he loved particularly was living amongst such a vibrant, um, hub of tree ratna activity. I think it was a great boon to him <coughs> to live his life um, surrounded by people who were uh, living out the values of, um, well, of the Dharma in the way that he had established and planted within us. Yeah. It reflected back to him uh, his life's work actually in a very concrete way. So many ways his timing was perfect. You know, he's had a long and good life, 93, so, we, you know, we, it's not like we've lost our teacher prematurely. In terms of him, he's had the happiest year of his life, he's told a number of people, one of the happiest years of his life in this last year, so it's very good to think of him dying, having had that experience. And from the experience of our order and community, I think we're in a very good place for continuing. You know, sometimes I think, I'm not sure he chose to die. I don't know if he chose to die at this time. But sometimes people die when everything's in place. And I wondered if there wasn't a sense that things that he really wanted in place were all in place now. There was this European Buddhist organisation having a big AGM. So 25 European Buddhist teachers were at Adistana. He met with several of them. He was very, very keen that that event happened here. And he was very keen that we did it well, which we did. 
there was contact between Adistana and a much wider Buddhist community. They'd appreciated being here and they really understood what Tri Ratna was about in a way they hadn't done before. I think that was a very important, oh, I don't know, a little turning point for him, an important thing for him. It's great to hear about people who... Then you had this international course, four-week international course happening, where he could see you know, that there were other generations now coming into the movement that were holding responsibility. And then it was just great timing in terms of the Men's Order Weekend happening a few days after his, de his death and suddenly, yeah, a lot of Dharmacharis were able to view the ban Bhante's body in this beautiful uh, shrine, as it were. I don't know how many people have been through to see the body, but it's been a lot, probably hundreds, I would guess, in the end. I mean, one thing that was quite extraordinary in this room was that we have the very large uh, refuge tree. And um, the way Bante was placed here, it meant that if you stood at his feet, at the bottom of the body, there was a very strong sense that the body was kind of part of that refuge tree. And a number of people spoke to me about that quite spontaneously, saying it had brought home to them this sense of lineage that from the Buddha down through Bhante, who's depicted on the refuge tree, but then his body actually lying there, the man that you know began our movement and who opened the door of the Dharma for so many hundreds of thousands of people was in that relationship. So it was actually quite an extraordinary experience to come and sit here. So Bante viewed Adistana, this place, this place here, uh, maybe not this barn, but anyway, <laughs> this place, uh, he viewed it as a place of lineage and blessings. He knew it would be where he would live his final years. He knew it would be where he would be buried. He will be buried as one of the most significant Buddhist teachers in the West since Buddhism began its migration from its countries of origin. We had a thousand chairs in there and there were, I would think there was probably 100 or 200 people standing. Mahamati told you that I first met, met Bhante 49 years ago. Actually, I saw him for the first time 50 years ago, almost to the day. I uh, saw him just walking along past Hampstead Heath. Uh, I had no idea who he was, but the image of his mindful, self-possessed presence is indelibly imprinted on my mind. I can see it right now. And it was only later that I realized the, the person I was learning meditation from was the one I'd seen so much earlier, or somewhat earlier. 
I did see him in Hyde Park at a Rolling Stones concert, but he denies it. <laughs> um, uh, since, since Bante's died, I've sort of realised more fully the impact that he's had on me. I feel he's in every breath I take. I feel he's in the flow of my blood. I feel he's in the beat of my heart. And uh, his presence is at the back of my mind, sometimes right at the front of my mind, all the time. And always has been. But since there's no physical locus uh, for his presence, he's become something uh, vast and uh, limitless. Bhante communicate Dhamma in a very simple way, it very deep. It touches our heart. I can't imagine without the Bhante, without the Sangha, what would have happened to India's revival of Buddhism because he was the only teacher who could really show us path. We knew this is the path. We knew that this is what we really wanted to do because Dr. Ambedkar has inspired us, but we do not know how to treat this noble path, how to practice Buddhism. It is actually Bhante who has shown us this path. So this sevenfold puja many years ago was compiled by Bhante from Shanti Deva's Bodhicharya Avatara. Through this puja, we dedicate ourselves to the Bodhisattva ideal and we cultivate the conditions for the arising of Bodhicitta, the sevenfold puja, with Mandarava, Blue Lotus, and Jasmine. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. And with garlands skillfully woven. And with garlands skillfully woven. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. So worthy of veneration. So worthy of veneration. I feel very fortunate that I knew Bante Ergin Sangharaksha for over 48 years as my preceptor, my teacher and my friend. And I met him on my very first retreat. He was wearing a quite a shabby crumpled robe. He was wearing over an orange polo neck with a Tibetan mala. There were probably slippers somewhere. <laughs> and he had very long hair and these big bushy sideburns. So that's the Sangha that some of you will only know through old photographs, but that was how he looked on that occasion. So I was completely fascinated by this man. I just felt, who is this man? <laughs> I felt I couldn't pigeonhole him or categorise him in any way. Reading the life of Milarepa, Bante, in another very moving passage, then goes on to say, and I quote, My hair stood on end and tears came into my eyes. If I had any doubts about the nature of my vocation, they were now dispelled. And from that time onwards, I lived only for the day when I would be free to follow to the end the path that seemed had been, in reality, mine from the beginning. Paramatha has had to hold a lot of details and a lot of, um, will hold himself together, having been a very constant companion in Bhante's life and there was this moment at the end of or towards the end of reading this song of Milarepa. If you think tomorrow is the time to practice suddenly you find that life has slipped away. Who can tell when death will come? Ever think of this. Devote yourselves to Dharma practice. elements of the day that I think held significance. Uh, for example, the offerings, 
that we had the seven traditional offerings. We had someone from each part of the world uh, to make an offering. And that very much reflected the international aspect of our order, which is very close to the heart of Bante. It's very much a part of Bante's vision for our order, that it's international. So it was particularly moving to see people from all around the world, those different areas, coming forward with their offering. Plus Bante's great niece who was there, she was able to do one of the, one of the offerings, which I know she was very touched to be able to do. Space, I contain all, from a grain of dust to a galaxy. I am that which exists in you as the space limited by the earth, water, fire and air that make up your physical being. But now they have all gone and I must go too, leaving you unlimited. Now we must part. Goodbye. So of course there's been grief and there have been tears and there's been sadness, but I think the overwhelming feeling has been gratitude and joy. And I, I, my own experience has been at times almost blissful, where I've just had a sense of spaciousness and um, confidence really. Affairs and business will drag on forever, so lay them down and practice now the Dharma. If you think tomorrow is the time to practice, suddenly you find that life has slipped away. Who can tell when death will come? Ever think of this. Devote yourselves to Dharma practice.